Well, more than two years after the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, we're continuing to learn more information about its origins, but also about um, some government-funded institutions that might have stood in the way of investigations into those origins. Now, you can see right up there on the screen, House Republicans are now saying EcoHealth Alliance concealed COVID-19 research data in an effort to preserve their funding. We can go ahead and put the next graphic up on the screen. Virologists are pushing back on more regulation of viruses that have been made more lethal in the lab. This is all part of important questions that are being asked about the research that was done at those laboratories. And there are uh, people that are actually filing FOIA requests to try to get to the bottom of this. Um, and again, you can see they're filing a FOIA lawsuit against the State Department for documents related to a State Department investigation of the origins of COVID-19, the EcoHealth Alliance, gain-of-function research, dual use of concern, and the Global Virome Project. So now joining us is a reporter at US Right to Know, one of the groups filing those FOIA requests and who, that did file this FOIA request in question, Emily Kopp. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, so sort of a, a long and complicated wind up because the story is kind of convoluted. There are a lot of government institutions, there's a lot of funding, and there's been a lot of obfuscation um, on the behalf of people that are being funded by taxpayer money. So why don't you tell us about this latest FOIA request, what you're hoping to get out of it, um, and which you know, agencies you're pressing for the information? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the short answer is all of them. Um, all of <laughs> you know, public institutions subject to um, public information laws. Um, my boss, Gary Ruskin, has really been on this um, from the beginning. Um, and really our hope is to, um, you know, in contrast to some people who say uh, Chinese institutions will never give you the data you're seeking, um, what we know is that um, Western virologists, Western labs, Western universities, um, including here in the US, entered into a lot of collaborations um, with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Um, and so- And then covered it up. Yeah, well, um, that grant that the new letter from Republican um, Republicans in Congress really gets to the heart of the issue, I think, and um, sort of the, poor oversight of this sort of research on enhanced pandemic um, pathogens. And so um, I'm often reminded of this famous biologist who said that the problem with modern society is that we have medieval institutions, but godlike technology. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that was really on display earlier this week at the National Institutes of Health, which had a public dialogue around what sort of regulation should be in place for um, you know, experiments that make viruses either more transmi transmissible or virulent in the lab. Um, mm. And uh, mm. what we saw is that um, lobbyists representing life sciences professionals, but especially virologists, really pushed back on the idea that we even needed to take a second look at how we regulate this. While um, other, you know, highly credible experts say that this Eco Health Alliance grant. Um, you know, that funneled money from the NIH to the Wuhan Institute of Virology is really emblematic of the, the issues and oversight here. Yeah, and, and what, do we, what do we know about that, about the work that EcoHealth Alliance did? Because a lot of this took place during the time when there was a legal pause on gain of function research. And what the Republicans are saying here is that if EcoHealth, you know, had been transparent about what type of work was going on in the lab, it would have been stopped. And so their suggestion is that their lack of transparency was related to their desire to keep the money flowing. The counter argument to more regulation is always more transparency. Say, so we don't need to regulate this, let's just make sure everybody knows what's going on. But is there a fundamental contra contradiction, a fundamental problem in this space because what's going on is happening in, in these you know, very private labs at the farthest corners of the earth, Wuhan Institute of Virology being a perfect example, for instance, that people in you know, a, a, an, an office in suburban Maryland at the NIH would just have no access to and are relying you know, completely on the, the grantee to relay them accurate information. But if the grantee relays accurate information, they will then lose their grant. So what's the way out of this? Hmm. 
Yeah. Um, hard to say. I think that is unfortunately a lot of um, the evidence that we're sort of uncovering through FOIA requests is that um, American institutions and American virologists and lab directors said that they had a lot more access than they actually did. Um, and so we see them sort of <laughs> privately worrying about the possibility of a lab accident at the Wuhan Institute of Virology while assuring the public, you know, I know Xi Jingli, uh, you know, top coronavirologist at uh, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and that's not possible. Um, and I'll also say, I think you might actually be giving um, opponents of regulation too much credit um, because what we saw <laughs> at this uh, meeting at the NIH earlier this week is, um, you know, some folks said, like, we, uh, are in favor of transparency insofar as it prevents, you know, congressional congressional legislation, um, you know, further cracking down on our, our work. But there were others who um, said we should limit FOIA requests into this sort of work, and we should um, limit the public's understanding of who is doing the work. Basically, you know, citing concerns about um, the lab leak theory and saying that scientists could be subject to harassment. Um, which is not okay, but I, I, you know, also think that transparency into work going on on um, pathogens made more dangerous to humans in the lab is also, you know, highly important. Um, and, you know, we saw lobbyists for virologists um, oppose more regulation and transparency in pretty stark terms. Um, so a representative of the American Society for Virology said that any sort of reform to the current regulations would be um, a solution looking for a problem and that we would risk tying two hands behind our back um, when it comes to the next pandemic. Um, and that's striking, right? Because the World Health Organization and the US intelligence community hasn't come to a firm conclusion about whether or not the most deadly pandemic in modern history came from a lab that received NIH funding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's such an important point. Um, and Emily Kopp, thank you so much for staying on top of this story. Uh, we really appreciate your insights this morning. Yeah, thanks for your interest. Of course. Next on Rising, Republican Senator Orrin Hatch passed away this week. We're going to discuss his legacy and more. Stay tuned. <laughs>